Happy Pride, Pride everyone! Pride. And welcome to a rainbow-filled <laughs> edition of Massey Art Studios. I'm Lee. I'm Jeremy. And this is the We Are Family Pride collab. It sure is. You've already seen one weekend of fun. That was two weekends ago. If you yes. didn't catch all those wonderful artists, please go back and check them out. Definitely. Because there were some beautiful, beautiful, rainbow-inspired, coloured paws. Yes. Today we're kicking off another group of fantastic artists. you got some stunners here today with you. And um, and yeah, and we're going first. There's going to be at least another seven people after yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. So some of these episodes are 15 minutes, some of them are 30 minutes, but stick with us. Please watch. We're all here pouring our hearts out yes. for our loved ones, our friends, our allies, and anyone that's here with us supporting this month of equality and solidarity. Yes. So we appreciate you all. I'd also like to thank Nate Bright for inviting us to do this collaboration. Of thank course. you so much. Thank you, Nate. Yeah. It was like herding cats. I don't know if you guys <laughs> can even imagine 16 artists. Right. Artists, all with their own minds and their own opinions and their own bits and pieces yeah. and ways of doing things. So, Nate, you deserve a medal for the effort and all the, of the uh, organization that you've put into this. Absolutely. Thank you so very much and thank you for asking us to be part of it. I love that hat so much. My show pony hat? Yeah, your, your <laughs> gay show pony hat. It's the unicorn of love. Um, okay, so what are we going to do? Um, I'm doing a really interesting Dutch pour. I don't know if I should tell everyone what I'm, what I'm doing. I think they should probably just see it. In fact, you've already seen the thumbnail. I'm going to do a blob painting. And I'm going to do a bob blob painting inspired by the rainbow. So I'm going to yes. represent all the colours of the pride flag in my blob. It's the first one I've ever done. So bear with me on this one. Uh, but it was a heck of a lot of fun. It just took me a week to do. So um, It did take him a week to Mine do is it. dry. We'll show you that at the end as well. All right, guys. Sit back. Enjoy. And um, we hope to have some funky music here for you too, because that's what Pride is all about. Lots of right. fun and laughter. And uh, we'll see you back at the end for a bit more chatter. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you very shortly. Enjoy these pours. Hey, guys, it's Jeremy here. And as you can see, I am ready for Pride. You are full for of this, Pride. Yes, mm -hmm. for this We Are Family. Dun, 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 dun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this collaboration that, that we got asked to do, which I'm so excited about. And you may, have, so already, happy. may yeah. have already seen, or it might be coming up, yes. but Jeremy's family, the song is of the family, We Are Family. Yes, which that is, is really our family song. There'll be some video memorabilia coming up very oh, soon Lord. if you haven't already seen it. Oh Lord. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I have some colors laid out before you. They do. Yes, the pride colors. Yeah. And now what I'm going to be doing today on this 10 by 20 inch canvas is I'm going to be doing a Dutch pour. Okay. But in a very special way. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to be layering, uh, laying down my base coat. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to pour my color onto the canvas. Right. And I'm going to be using the cute little mini blower here. The world's smallest blower. Yes, uh -huh. to do my uh, composition, to blow out my composition with. All right, I'm, I'm yeah. interested to see what happens here. Yes, nice, I am too. <laughs> I'm really nervous. Um, but <laughs> I'm using a, I'm, I'm repurposing a canvas here. Um, I gessoed it and, but you can still see a little bit of the color, but I'm not worried about that because when I put the base coat down and blow it out, it'll be fine. Okay, great. And uh, yeah. What colors not? do you have? I mean, I can see the colors, but do you know what they mm. are? Yes, I ha I don't know exactly what the name of them are, no. Okay. That one is Cadmium Red Hue. Cadmium Red Hue. That one I'm sure you know. Azo Orange. Uh-huh. Nice. This is the Pearl Golden, Golden Hour. Hour by Arteza, which I love this color, you guys. Um, that one's so light green permanent. Light green permanent. Which is next to it. By Liquitex Basics. And then we have primary blue. Primary blue. And then that final one is... Violet, you're turning violet, violet? It is violet, you're turning violet, but is it prism violet? I think it's prism violet, it's or, prism just, violet. or just straight violet. Yeah, but I it is it's a prism violet. Liquitex Basics color. It is, that And if is. You, are you using a pearl white, or is it just a flat, a flat white titanium flat white. white? Okay. Flat titanium white. Yeah. Interesting. I want the colors to really pop and I don't want it to be, you know, muted down by like a pearly white. Right. So, so okay. I just decided on a regular white. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so now as you layer your base coat, which is what you're going to do now, I'm yes. going to throw out some pride facts. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, okay, if that's sure. okay. Yeah, of course. So you go for it. All right. And some of these things I did not know also. Um, just some interesting tidbits of information when it comes to pride. So there actually was a gay rights movement long before Pride Month. Oh, I yeah. kind of guessed that, I think. But do you know how long the first kind of movement was? How long ago it was? Guess. Mm, in the 60s? In the 20s. What? Yeah, in 1924, Henry Gerber, a German immigrant, founded the Society for Human Rights in Chicago, and that was the first group to campaign for gay rights in the United States. Wow. How crazy is that? Yeah, that's really crazy. And then really in 1955, a group of women, including Del Martin and Phyllis Lyons, founded the Daughters of Bilitis in San Francisco, which really emerged as the first lesbian rights group in the United States. Wow. Yeah, so a long, long time ago. So the Stonewall riots actually weren't the first LBGTQ uprising. Did you know that? No. So clearly not as famous as Stonewall. It's not the one that everyone kind of remembers as the riot, but there was a riot in May 1959, and it was a group of individuals who were fed up being mistreated by the police. So they fought back at Cooper's Donuts in Los Angeles. So oh, wow. that actually was the first kind of, you know, uprising, which kind of, you know, was of the peoples against yeah. the police. Wow. Which I thought was interesting. And I think you know this one. Where was the first gay pride ever held? Um, okay, the first gay pride ever held, I believe, was in Chicago. It was. Yeah, I know you've yeah. told me that before. So um, it actually took place in 1970, and that was the first gay pride which was super yeah. cool. Chicago was actually the first place that actually like noticed, recognized and made a neighborhood, um, made the neighborhood uh, like named a, a, a gay neighborhood. It That's was called right. Boys Town. That's what you always say to me. Yeah, Chicago yeah. was the first the first place to because clearly you have West Hollywood in Los Angeles and yeah. there are always communities in any of the big cities that are recognized as yeah. we call it the gayborhood. Yeah. Um, and it was Chicago that was kind of was the first first, yeah, right? Exactly. Okay. So the pride flag of which Jeremy you're representing here mm -hmm. have their own interesting histories. Yes. So the rainbow flag, which is now the ubiquitous symbol of LBGTQ community, first appeared in the 70s. And that was Harvey Milk, who was the openly gay San Francisco city supervisor. Yes. And he tasked Gilbert Baker with creating a symbol for the gay community. Nice. Yeah, and that was where the actual original, um, it, it was in using instead of the pink triangle. And then the transgender flag arose from a challenge similar to that. Um, it was the creator of the bisexual flag, Mike Page, challenge someone else to create a flag for the transgender community and that's nice. how that yeah so all these kind of flags have all come about from people being tasked with you know being able to come up and represent the community in a certain way nice i really like that yeah so do i all right put it over to you so i'm going to do in, in the order of the red orange yellow green blue and violet and if you get stuck just look at your little wristbands there I know, that's what mm -hmm. i was doing okay <laughs> <laughs> um i'm going to do a line and not a puddle but a line actually okay and i'm gonna blow it out that way okay i yes. thought you were doing puddles i know i was thinking about doing puddles but in the back of my mind i kept thinking about this design okay and it just kept coming up in my mind to Got do it. it that way all right yeah. i'm sure you've practiced this a dozen times oh yeah okay well then i'm not gonna know it's gonna work then <laughs> here we go here we go Just a little bit better. Whoops. And when you blow them, they'll kind of all merge and mingle. Yeah, I think so too. It's we really are interesting what's happening already. Definitely going to mute this section because otherwise yes. there's going to be just a lot of hot air and it's not me this time, it's going to be the blower. Um, <laughs> so please sit back and enjoy this funky music. Is Jeremy 
blows out his Dutch paw. Yes. Do it, big boy. All right. Get that pride on. Wow guys, this came out so cool. I'm loving the effects that the red had like in the white right here. Um, the orange, I love what happened with the blue and the purple. It looks like smoke. It's like wisps yeah. of smoke. I'll be on a show pony. You were like, I'm gonna do lines of color instead of pull the puddles. And in my head, I'm thinking, <laughs> you fool. We're gonna be scraping this one. We're gonna be doing it again. We're gonna I be knew stood you were that. in this 100 degree garage this weekend while you pull this out. But it's actually really, pr I, I like it because you know what? It wasn't what I was expecting. And it's very different than anything I've seen. Clearly, I've seen Dutch Claws before, but I like the long, thin composition you've got. I, I really, yeah. really do like it a lot. This is what I was def definitely hoping for. I'm sure you were. Yeah. That's what I was I was hoping for something lovely and it is. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I really like it. So it's very, very cool. Awesome. Are you going to scrape your edges, touch it off, take them in for a close up? Absolutely. And if you haven't seen that Pride video already, I'm going to go, go to the archives and pull that one out of the We Are Family. Oh my gosh. By the Massey family, including Jeremy. Oh gosh. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. You're welcome. All right, guys, this is it. Thank you so much. And we're going to take you in for a close up. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs>
now I'm measuring out four inch squares and then I'm going to mark those out using frog tape and what you'll see me do using black and white is alternate the colours to create this checkerboard. I'm showing you this here because it's actually the most time consuming part of this whole process other than the days needed to allow the blobs to dry because you can't just paint all the black squares in one go because of where the tape is going it just you have to do these squares a couple at a time let them dry move the tape and then do a couple more squares so um, it was actually kind of you know a little bit tedious but I managed to get the checkerboard done in one night because there was only a thin amount of paint on here. So I was just painting it, leaving it to dry for a little bit. And then I was going back and then applying more tape over, like I'm just doing here, the black squares to paint the white ones. And I would do that over the course of, it was about maybe four or five hours with drying time in between. So now cut to my final square and in a tired, sleep deprived frenzy, I actually painted it black. <laughs> so I had to scrape the black from that tile and reapply white to it, um, which I'm doing right here. And then this kind of forms the very last check on the checkerboard. And I've also done the edges too. So it looks like, you know, thick panels of, of both black and white board put together. And then I'm going to start layering the blobs. So I gotta say, not known for my patience um, or necessarily like my fine detailedness, but I was really, really happy how this checkerboard came out. It just looked really neat. So I guess spend the time to get this done right because then you won't have to redo it. So it's fair to say that I've wanted to do a blob painting ever since I saw Mike Hammer's art, which is probably now two years ago It's when I really started getting interested in fluid art and was super excited actually about the idea of doing this. Um, Mike uses just a one specific type of paint for his blobs and doesn't necessarily mix it with a pouring medium and then just allows that to dry over the course of three or four days and then adds more blobs. But I have seen kind of documentaries on his process and one of the things that he mentions is that his paint cracks and he has to do a lot of touch-ups and rework to it and clearly all you guys out there that know fluid art will probably guess that's because he's just using paint he's not putting gack in it he's not putting pouring mediums in it he's just literally pouring the paint into blobs and letting it dry and that thick amount of paint is why it's cracking well I've been doing a lot of research, watched a lot of videos, watched a lot of people's different pouring recipes. A lot of people out there were using Floetrol and GAC and acrylic paint. Um, I saw Julie Cutts do some, I saw Tammy Anderson do one. Um, but I've taken most of my pouring inspiration, pouring medium inspiration from First Art Studio, who I will absolutely link in the description box. 
what you can see me doing here is laying my first colours down and I've got red and violet because on the white squares I'm going to start with red and work my way up the rainbow and on the black squares I'm starting with the violet and working my way down the rainbow and here I've just poured my first blobs out of a squeezy bottle and now I'm torching it off. Now you can see here this is the very next day so this has dried within 24 hours. The violet has dyed and dried the same colour as the violet in the tube. Um, so it's dyed particularly dark, just the colour that it was. Um, now I'm adding the second colours of blobs on top to kind of create the six colours on top of each other. But let me go back to talking about my pouring medium. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from First Art Studio, but, but First Art Studio doesn't have a, a, a recipe as such. She eyeballs all of her paint and and her recipe so i spent a, a few days before i started doing my blobs practicing with a recipe to see what would work this recipe here is 25 percent paint it's 25 percent liquitex gloss varnish and then 50 percent mod podge and that is the recipe for these blobs now the paint is Liquitex Basics. So it's what we'd probably consider like a level two. Um, if you go to a level three paint, you're gonna need to change that recipe. But if you're using any kind of Amsterdam or Liquitex Basics, then this is gonna work for you. And what you want when you actually pour your blob is for when you turn your squeeze bottle upside down is for the paint not to come running out. And for those blobs to actually form like a dome and they will dry just like that. Now you saw that very last yellow blob that I poured. One of my things that I learned, one of the things I learned as I was doing this was, you can't go back and touch up the blobs. You just gotta get it right the first time. So the technique that I kind of mastered as I was going through this was pouring vertically in one spot and getting to the point where I was comfortable with the amount of paint that I had and then just stopped. You can't go back and re-pour into your blobs. Basically here over the course of six days, I'm just applying each blob with a color, just making sure that each blob is smaller and smaller as I'm kind of getting to the top so that you can see each of the colors um, as they dry. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot harder than it looks. You definitely have to develop a technique when you're actually pouring the blobs out and clearly it's all about recipe. But if you use that 25% paint, 25% gloss of varnish and 50% Mod Podge should give you a really good consistency to be able to have a go at this because it is so much fun. Here's my very last layer so stick around to the very end because I'm going to show you the completely dried results but before we get to that you're going to see Jeremy and his family do a little bit of dancing to we are family so it's definitely worthwhile sticking around for thanks guys There you have it, folks. There you have it. There you have it. <laughs> you look like a gay track and field star. Yes, we need to go head on, head back on in a neighborhood like this. I think we should. In fact, <laughs> I think we probably usually already do. Um, so, there you have it, folks. What did you think? Jeremy, tell me about your Dutch pour. I really liked it a lot. I thought that the composition came out really interesting. It was like, smoky like the way it like moved on the canvas what? um i really yeah i really liked it i thought it was great i will admit when jeremy said i'm going to do lines of color rather than 
blobs and puddles of colour in my head, I was thinking, we're going to be doing this <laughs> all over again. <laughs> but I loved it. I genuinely really did. I, the way that they came out, like smoke, but it was kind of very reminiscent of yeah. the flag because of the way that you laid the... I really, really yeah. enjoyed that Thank one. You. I hope it dries just as beautifully as I it know. looks right now. Because yeah. I'm a bit worried about the white soaking yeah. up the colours, but it's drying really well. Yes. And speaking of drying really well, here she is, folks. My first ever blob painting. I hope you can kind of see that from the side there too. But um, I gotta say, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed doing this. There's definitely something about the sense of order and you know uniformity that you try and go for with a blob that really really spoke to me and it's only made me even more obsessed to do more of these bloody things um i've already got three more in my head that i'm now gonna do so expect to see a lot more of these little blob paintings on the channel because i'm playing around with recipes and i have a really awesome one that's working with acrylic paint and i think i might have just mastered one that will work with tlps and i have an idea about a really crazy one so Oh my goodness. So they're not the easiest to film because they take seven, so long, eight, yeah. ten days, whatever, to dry. But um, we'll make sure that we've got a few of these on the channel for you because we are obsessed. Yes. All right, guys. Please, please like and subscribe if you are here already. We really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. We have got seven more artists following us yes. now um, who we would love you to stick around and watch. Um, today is just about acceptance, equality, and people being given the opportunity to be who they are and live their true authentic selves. Exactly. We're not asking for anything that you as a community already have for yourselves. So this is just about equality and equal rights. We just want to love, man. Exactly. In that accent, you sounded like <laughs> Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Shaggy? <laughs> um, so, Please, please, please stick around. Go to see all the other pours. Yes. And we will be back here again for you on Tuesday for another fun pour. Until then, have a good day and um, we'll see you very soon. Bye, guys. Bye.